Hi, welcome along to Barbecue Life UK, the only YouTube channel dedicated to the Audi Camaro. And today, this video is 100% dedicated to the Audi Camaro. And we are talking about charcoal, how much to put in. We are talking about how to light it and vent settings for different uh, situations in your cooking. Right, first thing that I need to make 100% clear on here is everything in this video is a guide. So different brands of charcoals burn at different heats. They require different amounts of oxygen flow. The temperature in the air, the moisture in the air, everything is going to change ever so slightly the way that you've set up the Kamado. So I cannot stress that enough. You cannot just go... Barbecue Life UK said, if I set it like this, I'll get this temperature. You are going to need to fine tune. When I'm talking about vent settings, I'm going to be talking about finger whips. Your fingers might be fatter than mine, they might be skinnier than mine. So what my finger width is and your finger width is, is two completely different things. So bear in mind that these are only a guide and they're going to get you roughly in the right direction. So the most common question I get asked is, what charcoal do I use? and how much do I put in. So personally, I currently use uh, Big K BCH14 um, because I get a deal with them at the moment. I don't get it for free. I get a little piece of money off because I'm a VIP. Before that, I've used Ever Burning Charcoal. Loved that, that was great charcoal as well. I've used the Blue Bag stuff and I've used uh, Globaltic. So, but as I say, each one of these, there's a slightly different outcome. So charcoal that we've got in there, any old charcoal, you can still use it, providing it's not too small. So you need to knock all the ash off of it. So I just go in with my hand and I stir it around and I stir it around until all the ash comes off and then I knock as much of the ash as I can through that bottom grate and into the, into the bottom where I scrape it out before I cook. So amount of charcoal, you can fill that charcoal bowl to the top if you wanted to. If you're going low and slow and you want to be cooking for 18 hours, then you want as much charcoal in there as possible. If you're doing something really hot and fast, then you're going to want a lot of charcoal in there. But if you've got, you could have the same amount of charcoal in there and then your vent settings are going to decide on how quickly that burns rather than the amount in there. So it's a little bit different to if you've been used to cooking an offset where you want to keep the amount of charcoal down compared to this. So we, we can restrict the airflow and they're so efficient that you can fill that basket up. And don't be worried about wasting charcoal because as I showed you at the beginning, anything that is left in there, we knock the ash off and we use it again. So I like to move all of my old charcoal out to the edges because you get very small pieces in there and they can sit in them little holes in the vent and that will block your airflow from getting through. So I push all of that to the outside and I fill with new charcoal in the middle. So we pull that in and I've pretty much three quarters filled that basket. So I'm only cooking a spatchcock chicken later on today. I'm not actually going to light the Camaro in this video. I'm just gonna talk through the processes of it. And that charcoal in there, I probably won't even use I'd lose less than a quarter for cooking a spatchcock chicken. I've got a large spatchcock chicken today and it's going to use less than a quarter of that charcoal. We can shut the vents down at the end and save it. So as for lighting, there's two ways I like to light the Kamado. So 99% of the time I go in with these little uh, woodies. So these are shredded wood that's covered in wax and they light very easy. They get nice and hot and then that's going to light your charcoal. So I tuck two of them in if I'm doing a general cook. Even a low and slow, I tend to stick two in. Um, if I'm doing something like pizzas or smash burgers, I might use three, I might use two, and just keep the vents open for longer to let them temperatures come up. So you nestle them in, you don't want to smother them because they're going to need airflow as well. So get them nestled in, and then you can light them with a lighter, blowtorch, whatever it is you've got. The other way that you can light a Kamado is by using a heat gun or a loft lighter. So that you're just gonna tuck into the middle of your charcoal, let the heat come out of there and it will light it itself. So that's your two different ways of lighting. Now we're gonna move on to 
how we dial in temperatures and vent controls. So once the, if you're using woodies, once they've gone out, you want to leave the lid open for at least another five minutes because you want as much oxygen airflow in there as possible so that we can let the rest of the charcoal start to light. So I like to leave my lid open for five minutes. After that five minutes, even if I've used a loft lighter, I light it and then I leave it open for five minutes. Wait for the dog to stop barking. After that, this is then when I go in with, if I'm using a deflector, it goes in then and my grill grate's going at this point so that I don't have to reopen the lid until I'm ready to put my food on. So all of that goes in now and that all starts to come up to temperature at the same time. So my top vent, I completely open round. So that daisy wheel is on a hinge and it completely opens round to leave the hole in the top. And the bottom vent is completely open as well. So we want maximum airflow to begin with. We want that charcoal to burn and to start to warm up the ceramic. Now, depending on your temperatures outside, this can take 20 minutes. I've known it take 40 minutes. So it completely depends how cold it is outside and how well that charcoal has lit to begin with. If you've got moisture in the air, it tends to take a bit longer as well. So you leave them vents open for and then you watch your temperature gauge come up. Now you can use the temperature gauge in the dome, but remember that that is a dome temperature. So that is the temperature at that high point in the dome. That is not your cooking grate temperature. So I would highly suggest that you invest in a thermometer that clips into your grill grate and get a dual, dual probe one so that you've got one that can go into your meat as well. And then you can monitor your internal temperatures of your meat. So keep an eye on them temperatures. When you're about 40 degrees away from whatever your target temperature is, so whether that is low and slow, so you're talking anywhere between 100 and 120, I go for 110, but if I'm 10 degrees below or 10 degrees higher, I can live with that. Then we've got sort of slow roasting, so 140 to 160. Then we've got proper roasting, so we've got 180 to 200. Then we've got wing temperatures, so we're talking 250 and then we've got super high temperatures for smash burgers and pizzas where we're talking 350 so 40 degrees below that is when we start to close our vents down to whatever stage you want to cook for so if it's low and slow we close them right up if it's hot and fast we don't close them a lot so for a low and slow setting the daisy wheel at the top is only just open We've not got a massive amount of airflow to come out of there at all. The bottom vent is also very much closed. So we use the inner grate that's got little holes in it. We clip that over, make sure it's clipped over because I've made that mistake before that it's not clipped over and then you've got two big holes where them clips go into and air will rush in there and you'll get a hotter temperature. So make sure it's clipped over. Once that's clipped over, you want anywhere between one row of dots and one and a half row of dots generally and this should give you about 110 degrees c ish you are still going to need to dial it in now that last 40 degrees of temperature is going to come up slowly which is what we want and it's going to give you time to correct it open it up a little bit more if we need to close it down a little bit more if we need to if you overshoot your temperatures at any point in a commando it's harder to get it down than it is to bring it up just slightly so next vent setting is one finger. So that bottom vent we're set open at one finger and our top vent we've just cracked it open just a little bit more. So we're about halfway and this should give you around 150 degrees C. So slow roasting temperatures. So we're not low and slow, we're a hot and fast low and slow basically. So if you're doing, you, you can do pulled pork at this temperature and instead of it taking six to eight hours, it takes three to four, generally, depending on the size of what you're putting in there. A lot of generalizations in this video. Next vent setting up from that, again, we crack that top vent just a little bit more and we go two fingers. This is gonna give you 180 to 200-ish. So if you're doing proper roast, so that's nice for a spatchcock chicken, it's good for a joint of beef, things like that. Then we can go a little bit more. So we go two and a half fingers. This is gonna give you 
about 250 ish so this is nice for indirect chicken wings so you've got your deflector plate in there chicken wings on the top and that gives you a nice um, heat in there to get a nice crispy skin after that we are talking silly temperatures for pizzas and smash burgers so you're going to eat through fuel much more at these temperatures but it's a really good way of being able to cook these things so you go approximately four fingers in your bottom vent and your top vent i open the daisy wheel just under halfway so hinged halfway and the daisy wheel itself is fully open and this gives you much higher temperatures so i hope this has helped you today as i say the very much generalizations but i'm having so many questions come through on can you do a video on this and my answer is always if i do one it's going to be very general so it depends on your charcoal it depends on your weather conditions always make sure you don't have air blowing in that front vent if you if you're in a windy condition twist it so you don't have the wind blowing directly in there because it don't matter what you set your bottom vent to if the wind's blowing in there your charcoal temperatures will go through the roof so if you like what we're doing at barbecue life uk then please do subscribe to the channel make sure you leave me a comment if you think i've missed anything in this video then let me know and i'll do another little short video on it and fill it in for you so yeah thank you very much for watching Please check out my other AK cooks over here and subscribe over here. Cheers.